how Islamic zoology was the perfect synthesis of science and spirituality. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So one of the things that is taken for granted today is that science as if somehow undermines religion. For science to function correctly, it has to somehow be separate from any talk of metaphysics, God, religion, etc. But did you know in the Islamic scientific tradition, the opposite of that was true? Science, as it is understood today, is defined as the study of the physical world utilizing certain methods and aiming at a coherent and objective understanding of the natural world without resorting to any metaphysical explanation. Whereas in the Muslim world, the word science was used in the meaning of the Arabic word uloom or knowledge. It meant all knowledge. So you had religious sciences, spiritual sciences, physical sciences and mathematical sciences all springing forth from the same Islamic intellectual milieu. There was an inherent unity within these different fields and many times the same method was utilized in research within these sciences. Therefore, we find the scientific spirit first being exhibited in the religious sciences, especially the formulation of fiqh. Muslims of the medieval period viewed knowledge as an integrated and holistic enterprise that emerged from a single source. God. It was this experience of the divine unity called Tawheed that was manifest at different planes of reality. When it manifested in the physical world, the physical sciences studied it. When it manifested in the realm of reason, logic and the mind, the Islamic philosophical traditions, falsafa and kalam studied it. And when this reality manifested in the realm of the heart and insight, it was the spiritual tradition of Islam, Sufism, that studied it. As Dr. Usman Bakr says it, in Islam, Tawheed is the source of the scientific spirit in all domains of knowledge. Islamic intellectual tradition does not entertain the idea of the natural sciences alone as being scientific or as being more scientific than the other sciences. The Islamic scientific tradition regarded nature as a divine revelation and a source for gaining the knowledge of God's wisdom. For modern science, the physical world has been demystified and robbed of the unifying feature that gave meaning to its different parts. Modern science insists on studying nature by breaking it down into smaller parts rather than recognizing the inherent unity and uniformity in it. The modern scientists put all their attention at the pixel and ignore the full picture. This is not by accident, rather a fundamental method in studying science, which is called reductionism. So as Dr. Muhammad Iqbal puts it really well, when he says that we mustn't forget that what is called science is a mass of sectional views of reality. The various natural sciences are like so many vultures falling on the dead body of nature and each running away with a piece of its flesh. Nature as a subject of science is a highly artificial affair and this artificiality is the result of that selective process to which science must subject her in the interest of precision. Modern science, in order to achieve precision, compromises on the overall harmonious view of nature and reduces phenomena to disconnected parts for the purpose of study. Such an approach results in a disconnect not only within different branches of study like the humanities and sciences or psychology and physics, but this approach yields discord even within a single field, like in the case of the irreconcilability of general theory of relativity and quantum mechanics.
The Muslim world was unique in that for the first time in history a type of science developed that was rigorously scientific as it emphasized on empiricism and the experimental method but at the same time it wasn't divorced from a spiritual perspective on the universe. Rigorous scientific study was coupled with the Muslim zoologist's concern with the spiritual, symbolic and moral significance of animals. The history of Islamic science is filled with the mention of individual scientists and treatises in Islam that exhibit a perfect harmony and unity of scientific and spiritual knowledge in the domain of zoology. Al-Jahiz in the 9th century wrote his famous work known as the Book of Animals which became the most celebrated Arabic work on zoology. In it we find scientific, literary, moral and even religious studies of animals are combined. Dr. Usman Bakr says, according to Al-Jahiz, the primary goal of the study of zoology is the demonstration of the existence of God and the wisdom inherent in his creation. Al-Jahiz treated zoology as a branch of religious studies. Kamal al-Din al-Damiri, 14th century Muslim zoologist, in his book, The Great Book of the Life of Animals, we again witness in his book this harmonious combination of spiritual, moral, religious and juridical, literary, scientific and medical aspects in studying animals. Al-Damari even dealt with the significance of animals in the interpretation of dreams, a discipline which is inseparable from spiritual knowledge. Now let's talk about the Quran and the development of Islamic zoology. The Quran gives clear injunctions regarding dietary prohibitions related to certain animals. This factor also inspired the study of animals from a purely religious and juridical perspective. There were many Muslim scientists who became interested in understanding the justification for the Islamic dietary prohibitions, purely from the point of view of science. The Quran mentions many animals like camels, ants, bees, spiders, birds and dogs with a view to drive home certain moral and spiritual lessons. Animals, like all other creations, are manifest signs and ayat of God the study of which will yield a better understanding of the divine action in the world. Therefore, we see in the medieval Muslim world, animal behavior and traits were subject to scientific study in order to derive spiritual and moral lessons from a particular animal species. So a beautiful testament of this religious spiritual character of the biological sciences that were developed in the Islamic scientific tradition was that mystics as well as theologians partook in this effort uh, to understand and then articulate the origin of man in the entire creative order in their own specific way. So somebody like Maulana Rumi uh, who is a mystic and somebody like a, a theologian from the Ashari school of thought Sheikh Jurjani both of these people had their own views viewed creation and the origin of species uh, from their own respective perspectives so there you go for a mystic like Molana Rumi the idea that is central to his entire thesis is the interconnectedness of creation and so he writes First man appeared in the class of inorganic things. Next, he passed there from that into those of plants. For years, he lived as one of the plants. And when he passed from the vegetative to the animal state, he had no remembrance of his state as a plant. Again, the great creator drew man out of the animal state into the human state. Thus, man passed from one order of nature to another till he became wise and knowing and strong as he is now and at the next stage he shall pass from this too he'll soar and lift his head among the angels then he'll escape even from that phase as well everything is perishing except his or god's essence and for somebody like a Muslim theologian whose central focus is to understand the role of the divine in the creative order, 
Sheikh Jurjani as well partakes in this exercise of reflection on animal species as he writes, when one contemplates the wonders among the animals and plants, these cannot be attributed to blind forces, whether they be simple or composite. This is especially so with respect to what happens in the wombs of animals, which includes planning, measurements and best choices. These acts can only be attributed to someone who knows comprehensively, knows all of the hidden secrets, acts with wisdom and power. And the Book of God says it is he who forms those in the wombs. When the agent willer, al fail al-Muhtar, is accepted and everything is traced back directly to him, one finds great benefit. Thus we see in the Islamic Golden Age or the Islamic scientific tradition different scholars from different areas of interest, a mystic in his own way, a theologian in his own way, a biologist in his own way, partook in this common exercise of reflection over the animal kingdom in their own respective paradigms. And while Islamic science is indistinguishable from modern science when it comes to its emphasis on observation and experimentation, this emphasis happens to be a major contribution of the Muslim world to Western science. But there are fundamental differences as well, one of which is this mystical spiritual character of Islamic science, which is at serious odds with the current naturalistic and physicalist understanding of science. So naturalistic when it only attributes everything that happens to the blind forces of nature, physicalist because na uh, modern science just denies anything beyond physical reality.